What's going on, everyone? I hope you're having an amazing Thursday. Kind of an exciting day for a number of reasons. So let me talk through a few things really quick and then we'll get into this topic here. So the first thing I'm really excited about is like, obviously we had volume, like no volume, right? We had the lowest volume day in seven years. And I think that's very exciting because I've been saying for a while now, I think that the uh, DRS is leading to an increase in cost to borrow and an increase in, well, you know, utilizations at 100%. We're seeing fails to deliver. And I think we're seeing that volume is gonna keep drying up, right? Because we're taking shares off of the exchange. It just makes sense to me. And then other people have been arguing like, nah, that's not the case. And, and then I've been saying as well, I think that the issuance of the stock dividend split last year would cause an increase in that even more, right? We would see even lower volume we'd see uh, cost to borrow pop off and we would see uh, fails to deliver pop off. We haven't seen those two yet, but we've seen super low volume. And I think that's very exciting because a lot of people were saying, no, because um, there'll be more shares and all these new shares issued, there's gonna be more shares floating around and it'll make things easier for the shorts because there's gonna be more volume. And now we're seeing like three or four days now of ultra low volume. So I think that's super cool. And then the lowest volume day in seven years. So it's just kind of like, I don't know, it's it's good when things kind of happen the way you expect them to happen. They don't always, right? <laughs> but when they do, it's like, that's cool. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to continued like struggles on the cost to borrow front. We're still here at 30%. We haven't seen it pop up yet. Utilization popped back up to 100%. So like you could, you could say it's day one, but it's kind of like day 118 in my mind, but I'll, I'll put day one on there. So this is still kind of continuing. And then price is stabilizing a bit, but I'm still cautious on the price thing. Although we've had, you know, I think people are excited because we've had two days of green, although today was like just barely green. Um, and then we haven't seen an update from computershare.net. However, like if you check Superstonk, like post dividend, it's just a flood. And I think it's gonna be cool because um, shares are so cheap now, right? I mean, I've had people say in the comments, like I skipped a haircut or I've skipped a meal out, you know, with the fam because we could just buy another share. That's that's what we were hoping for, right? And then people turn around right away and DRS those shares. So it's just like the whole forum is just people posting their DRSs. And I think that's ultra cool because we should see this just blow up past 50%. And someone made a really good point. They said it could fill up like faster, like we're we're on the we're on the um we're running it back, right? Is how they said it, which I love that analogy, right? Made it to the halfway point. Now we're going to run it back. Hopefully it goes faster. So just all this is just very exciting to me. I'm, I'm ultra enthusiastic about what's going on with the stock. And then I'm also super excited about the survey. People continue to respond. So we're over uh, 1200 responses. We can see that the percent DRS is ultra stable at 38%, which I find interesting. But if you haven't done the survey or if you're not familiar with the survey, please um, just read the description and fill out the survey. I feel like the data is really, really interesting. It's giving us like a lower bound to go with our upper bound from last year's survey and sort of a middle bound as well. So I think that this gives us like just more information about how much um, retail could really own of GameStop. And it's encouraging because no matter how you look at it, we own the float, right? And we may own the whole company if not twice. So I think that's all just really neat. And then what's really cool I wanted to add was um, just with these 1200 responses, which is like this tiny community on this YouTube channel, right? We own about 1% or one one hundredth of the company. Look at that 2.5 million shares owned by the people that responded here. That's like incredible to me, incredible retail ownership. So just super cool. Um, what I want to talk about here is this topic of, I've been wanting to make this one for a while. So I made, um, reason number one to be bullish on GameStop. It was the NFT marketplace. And I talked all about it and I'll keep talking about the marketplace because I just think it's exciting to see them, you know, just continue to work on it. Um, reason number two that I was super bullish on GameStop was the stock dividend split. And then that was last week. So you could go back and watch that video, but I've been wanting to make this one because while we were ultra early last year on, you know, thinking that they would do an NFT dividend. I honestly thought, <laughs> I thought that they did, they would do it like last year or something. I don't know. I was, we were just so early. Right. And all this just takes time. But now that the wallets here and the marketplace is here, we got to start thinking ahead to a degree and thinking about what this could really look like. So it's, I don't even know if I would call it a long shot. It just makes sense. Like, and if, if Ryan Cohen or anyone at GameStop leadership, like sees this, like if, and if it's not on the table, like it should be on the table, but I'm, I'm sure they're thinking about it. Um, but I want to credit, uh, this user on Reddit, Petite Pain. 
I'm going to tab over in a little bit to their post today because it got me fired up and got me to where I was like, all right, let's, let's actually make this video. Um, and I, and I took some of the stuff that they said in that post and put it in here. So I want to credit them. So, uh, Broke it down this way. So I'm gonna refer back to Overstock, which I did in a previous video. I talked all about the Overstock crypto dividend. So if you wanna go back and watch that video, you can. But I'm gonna basically talk about like what it was, uh, why they did it, how they did it. And then I'm gonna compare that to how GameStop could do it. So this is my theoretical case for GameStop. So what happened with the Overstock crypto dividend? Well, Overstock's like actual stock is OSTK. And then they issued out a crypto dividend called OSTKO, which is a uh, crypto, but it's also a security token, meaning that it is actually a stock. It's a series A1 preferred stock. So it has to adhere to SEC regulation. And what they did was they issued one of these coins, which you could think of them as just stock, right? One of these stocks as a dividend for every 10 shares that somebody owned. So if somebody owned like a thousand shares of OSTK, they got, what's that, 100 shares of OSTKO, right? I, said, I think it said 1,000 and 100, right? Um, and then, um, but what happened with it was if you own some like non-divisible by 10 number of shares, like 57, you'd get five of these crypto shares, but you would only get um, cash for the remaining seven shares. So that presented an issue because I think because of that, to some degree, a bunch of prime brokers, it was like two or three prime brokers, basically argued, and the SEC kind of supported them, that they could issue cash instead of this crypto dividend. And it, this whole thing ended up going to court and being fought for almost a year. They ended up issuing it out, but I think when they did the actual issuance, um, it, they didn't end up paying cash for the crypto, except in the case where people had these remainder shares going on. So in GameStop's case, I don't know, thinking back on that and learning from that, I would I would think that GameStop should do something more like this. Obviously, I think that doing a crypto dividend, it would be better to do an NFT dividend because the NFT makes sure that the uh, tokens are non-fungible, right? They're not interchangeable. That makes each token unique and gives an even stronger case for why you can't like pay cash for the dividend or something like that. It would still need to be a security token. It would still be a preferred stock. I would recommend, or I would think that it would be wise to do a one for one. That way, like if someone owns a thousand shares of GameStop, they get a thousand shares of the NFT dividend. That avoids this whole issue of cash for the remainder. You would still have cash for fractional shares like with any other dividend payout, except I guess what happened this time where people actually, so that's interesting, but you can't get a fraction of an NFT. So, um, you know, it just kind of is what it is. So going on to the next part, why did Overstock do this? Well, they did this because they were a tech company. They were officially like as a retail and one of the few at the time retail companies accepting crypto on their platform. And they had invented or created the subsidiary company T0 as a crypto exchange and where you could like create uh, cryptos. So they also wanted to issue out these preferential stocks to people which had voting and dividend rights and still do. So think of it as just new stock. So the outstanding shares of Overstock basically increased by about 10%. And 10% of their shares are now, rather than on the NYSE, on the New York Stock Exchange, are traded on T0. And these special preferred shares not only get to vote and have dividend rights, but they got special dividend rights as well. And that's paid out quarterly as cash dividends. All right, so that's why they did all this. For GameStop, I think they even have a better case to do this, all right? So obviously GameStop is now a tech company officially, and I've talked about that before. Hugely exciting because per the legal case or the court case, uh, you kind of need that to issue this out, right? So they've got grounds to issue it. They've got the wallet and NFT marketplace, right? You could do the same thing where the preferred stock, these new shares, would have voting and dividend rights as well as special dividend rights. But what's cool about it being an NFT is it opens up more possibilities because you could do, you know, quarterly or whatever one one time cash dividends, you know, just regular or um, special cash dividends. But you could do crypto dividends as well. Like every quarter, the you could get paid out Ethereum based out of uh, the marketplace's revenue. I think that would be super exciting. It could pay out pro points. You know, if you're a pro member, I think that'd be really neat if somehow they linked up your wallet to your pro membership. And then what would be really, really cool is kind of like how if you own one of the Cyber Crew NFTs right now, they're gonna airdrop people a bonus NFT, right? 
And I think they're going to keep issuing those out to people. Like it could be the same thing. Your, your new stock here, your NFT stock shares that you're holding could then grant you new NFTs that are not stock, right? But like you could get bonus airdrops of content, right? You could get things from partners. You could get things that are GameStop exclusives, all kinds of cool things. So I think that it's got just more potential even than overstocks because overstocks was basically limited to cash. Whereas with the marketplace and everything and all the content on the marketplace, there's just way more going on here. I think that uh, GameStop could do with it. So just an ultra strong case and just, a, I think it could, it could just be such a, like this was already, Overstock was a very new, uh, like novel thing. And then GameStop could just take it to the next level, right? It could just, it, it would really be like something to go in the textbooks um, and companies would look at it and be like, wow, that's like something we got to get into. And something I want to mention is that like a lot of people maybe aren't familiar, familiar with this, but in Japan, when you're a stockholder of a company, there's kind of a tradition over there that they give you things, right? So a lot of people will own small amounts of different companies because you get these um, things sent to your house. It could be like food, it could be um, toys, all kinds of different things. So, and that's been a tradition in like the Japanese kind of corporate world and stock market for a long time. I don't know if it still is quite as strong, but that could bring that to you know other countries if GameStop starts doing it, because basically, owners of the, st of the stock, specifically this preferred NFT stock, could get stuff from the company. And I think that's new because right now people like in the US are used to only getting cash as a dividend, but you could get stuff, right? You could get content, you could get rewards, um, earnings, you know, as a revenue stream, all kinds of different things. So how, did, how was it done? With Overstock, it's interesting. They had computer share is their transfer agent, so they issued it out and then it was airdropped and held and, and also traded. So in T0, so T0 acts as both a broker and an exchange, kind of interesting. And it's a subsidiary of Overstock. What they tried to do was have a six month lockout period on these crypto tokens, meaning as soon as you got them, you couldn't trade them for six months. The court that went to court, this whole kind of thing went to court and they ended up not doing that. I'm not sure if it was like struck like that they were ruled that you couldn't do it, but they ended up just not doing it. So what I would think that uh, they could do with GameStop is do basically the same thing, issue it through computer share. The NFT is then airdropped and held in people's wallet, and then it could be traded on the NFT marketplace. So kind of like what I said in a previous video, if people need money now, you know, um, they could go and sell their share, this NFT share on the marketplace and get cash for it now. Um, but then new, whoever then buys it would, would get the rights to these uh, later like distributions, all right? And then the last part I wanted to talk about here was the impact. So because the shorts did not get these tokens, these OSTKO tokens, it caused an immediate short squeeze. It actually, the announcement itself caused a squeeze. It went to court. They kept trying to attack the company down. They took the company all the way down below $3. But then when they actually ended up issuing out the crypto dividend, the stock shot up past $120. So it basically did like a 40 X and it stayed really high for a long time. The stock is still like over 20 or $25 today. Um, but it creates two pools of stocks. You've got your, uh, stocks on the New York stock exchange and you've got your outstanding shares. And then in this case, you've got 10% of the shares traded on T zero. And those are the preferred stocks that get the quarterly dividend. All right. So with GameStop, what could it cause? Because, uh, the shorts would not get the NFT there would be an immediate short squeeze as shorts close their positions or like hoped that they could buy the NFT on the NFT marketplace to deliver to people. It would create two pools of stock, the stock that's currently tra uh, traded on the New York Stock Exchange, 304 million shares. And then you would have the NFTs, however many they were, hopefully one-to-one -one or something like that, that are traded on the NFT marketplace. What people have asked about was could they like exchange your stock that's on the market on the New York Stock Exchange for the NFT. I think what they would want to do is like theoretically what GameStop could do, this would be like the play of the century, is if it caused a huge short squeeze, right, on the stock. When the price goes to the moon, I put a telephone number here because who knows what it goes to, then what they could do is they could issue new shares, regular shares, into the market, you know, like they did last year twice 
generate just a ton of money, you know, you're talking about billions of dollars like last time or trillions, uh, trillions seems crazy, but you know, who knows? Uh, and they just generate all this cash, right? And then after the squeeze, when the price goes back to something more reasonable, right? Then they could buy shares back. You know, this would be years later and take a lot of their shares off of the New York Stock Exchange. So at that point, most of their outstanding shares would be the NFT dividend that would be NFT shares that would be on the marketplace. So that would be like a, a way to do it. Um, so kind of interesting to think about. But anyway, that's kind of all the things I could think about with the uh, possibility of a crypto or NFT dividend. Again, I wrote up here that's a long shot, but I feel like it just makes a lot of sense. And a lot of people are talking about it more and more and more. And I think it's something to be really excited about. That's why it is my number five, because it, it would just be devastating for shorts, but also, It'd be something completely new that uh, doesn't exist, but would have like just incredible value long term. Like I would want to just keep holding my shares to keep getting getting the dividends. And like think about like you could retire and just you know look forward to this coming in every month or three months or whatever. That would just be really really neat. So I wanted to tab over because I mentioned the sheet is updated. Um, what I wanted to caution people is like, we're looking a lot like Tesla. So if you go to the third tab on the sheet, the Tesla comparison is right here and they dipped Tesla hard right after the split. So like we've kind of rebounded a little bit and it's like, my question right now is, are we here on the Tesla graph or are we like down here on the Tesla graph? Hard to say. So are we going to dip a little bit more and then rebound hard and I don't do something like this. We'll see. I just keep updating it and see what it looks like. I don't know if we hit the bottom already and we're gonna bounce out of it, or if we've got a bottom still coming up. I don't know, really tough to say. I also wanted to tab over here really quick and say, as you can see, utilization back is on day one. And then we're gonna get new, The oh, the end of the quarter is tomorrow. So that's kind of nice because at the next quarterly earnings, which will be, it'll be a little while, uh, we'll see the DRS number and see how close our model is, which will be really nice. And then we should get new fail to deliver data for the end of June here in a couple of days, which will be really neat to see. But the thing I really wanted to mention was look at this volume, right? This is remember, remember what you got to think about too, is like, I think in our minds, we're still thinking a lot pre-split. So just divide these by four. This is like about yeah, like 1.5 million volume. This is less, this is less, and this is like 700,000 volume pre-split. This is like nothing. Like our volume is gone. Um, and that's usually what happens when the price gets really low, right? Here's the lowest recent time. Volume was low. I've got it in blue, uh, like green over here. So every time that volume like dries up, that's where we're hitting like a relative low. So that's, that's encouraging for me because we kind of tend to like rocket out of that at some point. So we'll see how long we're in this for. I wanted to mention this post earlier today by uh, Petit Payne, and I'll link this in the description. Great post talking about the NFT dividend, all right? And then they also mentioned, look at the Ethereum active addresses historical chart. And we all know what this blip is over here on the right, right? This is people activating their GameStop wallets, going on the marketplace and buying NFTs, right? This is huge. I even pulled it up on another website. This is the five-year chart. Look at active uh, wallets. This was the first big run-up for Ethereum, I believe. And then this was the recent run-up for Ethereum. But like we are in a beta marketplace and it is blowing up. And the iOS version is in, isn't even out. This isn't even the full launch of the uh, marketplace or the wallet. So you can imagine the impact that Layer 2 and GameStop and everything's gonna have on the Ethereum space. Just, I, th I think that this is just huge because it gives us, again, more information about how big the GameStop community is. Look at that, we're, we're just crushing this graph. It's just really cool. And then what I wanted to also mention is one final thing. They did an update today on the GameStop wallet. And I know a lot of people, um, they even did like a survey on Twitter, I believe, which was really cool about your most wanted features and people voted for full screen and they did it. Check this out. It's all full screen now for the wallet. Uh, all you got to do is close your Chrome. I restarted my computer. And then when I opened it up again, it updated the, uh, the GameStop wallet. And now what you do is you go right over here and you click on that button and you click on open in a new tab and it goes full screen. So I just think it looks amazing as full screen looks really, really good. And, uh, 
you know, it's the same functionality and everything, but I love how fast they're updating and doing all this stuff. The second most requested feature was folders for your NFTs. And I'm looking forward to that because at this point I've got just all kinds of NFTs, which are amazing, but I want to categorize them, right? Like I want to put the ones that were from the marketplace, the ones I've made, the ones my daughter has made. Um, she actually just made this one. So she did a painting. So I'll show you guys yesterday. Uh, so I thought that was really neat. And yeah, I just super appreciate you guys sending me awesome NFTs. I just lost the one I was going to show, but, uh, yeah, they're all just super cool. And I just love all of them. Like, thank you guys so much. We got pictures, got art, all kinds of neat things. So thank you guys so much. And again, I'm just ultra excited. Um, I feel like I said in previous videos, a bunch, it feels like the summer of 2020 with the stock, right? But like in terms of the marketplace, the wallet and everything, we're in unprecedented territory and just exciting things to look forward to every day we could see something new. So I don't know, something I, that we should be looking forward to is like, um, you know, they were supposed to launch, I think the full marketplace by the end of quarter two. We'll see what that means because, um, you know, per their IMX agreement, does the beta count? It might, hard to say. So how much longer will it be until like Loopring and IMX get fully integrated and we see IMX uh, products on there and games on there? I don't know, I'm really excited about that. So anyway, I'll, I'll end the video there. I don't wanna go off on too many tangents, but um, hope you guys are just having an awesome day. Hope you guys have had a great week and I'll see you guys in the next one.